Let's talk about the 10 products you need to do exterior detailing. So we're not really focused on the interior. I have another video covering the tools that we use, so you can, uh, I have a link down below if you wanna give that a watch. So today we're just focusing on the actual exterior. And one thing I wanna point out, and I wanna make very clear, is that I'm not gonna be focused on the actual products, as far as the actual brand name. Because to me, over the last 10 years, like you need to put an emphasis on how you use something, not so much what you're using, right? So I'm not gonna say, well, Adam, is the best. No, Maguire's is the best at this. No, Rupes is the best at this. No, Griez is the. They're all like if you're getting it from a reputable brand that has a track record of putting out good products, or even if you just have your own personal opinion about that brand and you like it, that's good enough. So I'll have the links to the products that we use down in the description box, but I'm not gonna be super hyper-focused of saying, okay, so for this thing, we use this brand, and for this thing, we use that brand. Just because for me, I'm gonna use whatever product works. I don't care from whatever brand it comes from, because my main thing running a business is, does it work and does it get me results? And if it does, let's keep on using it. For me, I have no intention of trying 20 different products to go and dress a tire, or to clean glass, or to do whatever I need to do. Because for us, like our main thing is, are we getting the results that the customer wants? We're not here to be like, oh, we're, we're, a, we're a mad scientist trying so many different things. We're gonna find what works, we're gonna use that, and we're gonna keep on using that, and that's it. And if you are starting your detailing business, I know buying tools and products can get a bit pricey just because over time you need more and more, which is why I'm super excited to see that Jobber is starting their Jobber Grants program again this year. They're gonna award 25 grants to home service business owners that total $150,000. Now, this is a grants, not a loan, and you can use it on marketing, purchasing equipment, hiring, whatever you see fit. You can click the link down below to apply. It takes less than five minutes. Number one is gonna be an all-purpose cleaner APC. Now this one, you wanna make sure it's in concentrate form because if you purchase that one, you can dilute it to however you need. Meaning if you need a more aggressive cleaner for the wheels or for the engine bay, you can dilute it one-to-one. -one. Or if the engine and wheels aren't that bad and it's more like a maintenance cleaning because you see it every three weeks or so, you can dilute it 10 to one, right? So you can dilute the operas cleaner based on the strength that you need. And this one's also gonna be one of the most frequent products that you use. Whether it's exterior or interior, you're gonna be using it a lot because you can use it as a pre-spray around the vehicle if you need to cut down some dirt. You can use it as a bug remover. You can obviously use it to clean your wheels, tires, inner fenders, engine bay. You can use it to agitate the emblems on the exterior. Like there's so many use cases for this one and not even including the interior to clean the plastics, the leather. Um, so with this one, like this is gonna be one of your most used products in your business. You might have it in a pump sprayer in a 32 ounce uh, a bottle. You might, ha you might have it in a foam pump sprayer. Like you're gonna be using this one very frequently. Number two is a rinseless one wash in concentrate form. Then this one has a lot of versatility because you can use it as obviously a rinseless wash, a waterless wash, a quick detailer, a clay lube, a glass cleaner, or if you just need to use it to wipe down dust, the dust in the interior, or to wipe down the door jams, or to wipe down exterior chrome, or to wipe down an engine bay. Like there's so many use cases for this product. Now for us, like we have a dedicated glass cleaner, um, but for a lot of times we're like, we, we have a lot of bottles diluted already for our rinseless wash or our clay lube. It's much easier just to grab that than to have to go get the dedicated cleaner um, that we may have somewhere else. And if you're just getting started, I would definitely lean towards using this because it's way more cost effective. Instead of buying a gallon of glass cleaner or a gallon of a quick detailer or a gallon of, of clay lube, you can buy one gallon of a rinses wash solution that's in concentrate form, and you're able to dilute it to have it. Like you can use, you, you get a lot more usage out of a concentrate form of a rinseless wash because you can use it for so many things. And again, we've been using this thing for so many years on so many vehicles for clay lube, for glass cleaning, for a quick detailer. Now there are situations where it's better to grab a different product or go with a different process, but it's a, it's we use it all the time and we get fantastic results. Just always remember, it's about how you use it, not exactly what you're using. Number three, it's gonna be your foam wash or a shampoo or a car 
car wash shampoo or car soap. So many names to it, there's no one universal term. You get the point. But on this one, so for us, we don't really use the two bucket wash method anymore. If we're gonna use a uh, traditional soap that has suds in it, it is nine out of 10 times gonna be in our foam cannon where we're going to foam the vehicle down. We're gonna foam down or at least lubricate our wash media, wash towels or, or wash mitts. And then we're gonna do a contact wash. We hardly ever do, if any time, do we ever do a two bucket wash method like it's so so rare if we ever do that um, so we'll, we'll have one bucket with water and shampoo, and shampoo in there and then we'll foam it down we'll dunk the wash mitts in the clean bucket and then we'll get the washing um, but this one again I, I wouldn't go overkill you don't need four different car sh shampoos or car soaps whatever you want to call it if you're gonna tr if, you, if you're looking for a wash shampoo that's gonna strip the previous wax or sealant I would just dedicate a specific step in the process to do that. So for us, when it comes to prepping a vehicle for a coating or something, or even just a sealant, we don't rely on the car wash soap to strip away the old protection or to just make sure there's no polishes on there. We're gonna use a dedicated um, paint prep to remove the grease and oil or polish it or whatever's on the paintwork. That way we know the paintwork is actually bare or naked as we call it to apply, to apply the other form of protection. So that's why we don't overthink it as far as like, oh, is this gonna be able to strip all the, all the, uh, all the old coating or the old protection? It's like, bro, just go straight to the other, to the next step or a dedicated step. That way you ensure that it's actually being, that you're actually stripping away any protection from the paintwork. Number four is gonna be your plastic and rubber dressing. Now again, do not overcomplicate this. You don't need to get a specific tire dressing and a specific engine bay dressing and a specific exterior trim dressing. Like there's so many products on the market, but I'm kidding, like to simplify everything, just get one, Plastic and rubber dressing, because guess what? If it's plastic or rubber, you can use it to dress it. You don't need a dedicated tire dressing. Guess what? It's rubber. You don't need a dedicated exterior trim. Guess what? It's plastic. So you can use one plastic and, and dressing, uh, plastic and rubber dressing, and there's so many different names to it. There's a plastic dressing, there's a uh, vinyl rubber uh, plastic dressing. There is a, uh, like, there's so many types of names to it. They're all gonna do the same. Um, so you don't need to overthink it because on this one you can use it for the tires, for the uh, inner fenders, you can use it for the exterior trim, you can use it for the engine bay. Now I will say where it makes a difference is the type of solution that it is, meaning is it like uh, liquidy and more sprayable or is it more thick that you have to actually squeeze out. Um, the reason why is because if you're, if you're working on dressing an engine bay or if you are dressing like some knobby meaty tires, um, those can actually play a difference into how you apply it. But as far as like what product you actually use, keep it very simple, you only need one uh, and you can use that across the entire exterior. Now where it might be a difference and I'm not gonna add it on the list just because this is more of like a specific product that in case a customer actually pays for it, but that's gonna be a trim restore. So that one's actually a different category because a plastic dressing is more so for like maintenance, like you apply it, depending on how you drive it, one or two weeks later, it's gonna wear off. Whereas a trim restore, it's gonna permanently restore it um, and keep it looking good for a longer term. But again, that's assuming that the customer is actually paying for that service and you're gonna actually you know, go through that process there. Number five, it's gonna be a glass cleaner. Again, the rinseless wash, we oftentimes use that as our dedicated glass cleaner. But if not, you can also buy a gallon full of glass cleaner. Just be, I, it does help sometimes to not have to worry about diluting something and just having like a gallon of glass cleaner ready to go. Like that's also a thing. So we always keep on hand in stock a glass cleaner and we always have a bottle filled ready to go for a glass cleaner. So I'm not saying it, it's not needed. Like it does help just to have a dedicated glass cleaner. Um, but again, do not overthink this. If you have a rinseless wash solution, you can use that as your glass cleaner. Depending on the scenario, what you're working on, it does help to have like a dedicated, more aggressive cleaner sometimes. But even with that, there's workarounds to that. So again, I don't want you to overthink any of this. You can buy a glass cleaner, or if you have a rinseless wash, you can dilute it for that. But if not, it doesn't hurt you to have a dedicated glass cleaner. Number six is gonna be an iron remover. Now with this one, we only use one iron remover for both the paint and wheels. 
We're not gonna go buy, buy a dedicated paint iron remover and then a dedicated wheel iron remover. That's not needed. If you look at the back of the label on each one of those, it's gonna say, if it's a paint dedicated one, it's gonna say safe for wheels. If it's a wheel dedicated one, it's gonna say safe for paint. So it's the exact same product. We don't try to have two different types of the same product because it's kind of redundant and not needed. Now I will say that we don't use the iron remover as a dedicated wheel cleaner. One, you're just gonna end up spending more money on buying the same product over and over. But then two, it's not as strong as like a one-to-one -one or acid if you really need like a super aggressive cleaner um, compared to an iron remover. So what we do is we'll clean the wheels and tires with whatever, uh, uh, you know, whether it's operator's cleaner or acid, right, to clean the wheels. Now, once they're clean and we've already washed the vehicle and we're on the we're on the iron remover process on the paintwork, we're also gonna spray the wheels with our iron remover, let it dwell, and then as we're rinsing off the vehicle, we're also gonna rinse off the wheels and that's how we still do the iron remover. So we don't use it as a dedicated wheel cleaner. We're gonna use it the same way we use it on the paintwork and that's after it's all cleaned and washed, we're gonna do the iron remover to decontaminate any of the iron fallout. Number seven is gonna be a spray wax. And this one's very simple. I mean, maybe it is a maintenance vehicle of yours and um, you know, maybe you applied a sealant two months ago and after every wash, you just hit it with a spray wax or some form of spray protection to just keep the protection going. Or maybe it's a first time customer and they're just getting a wash, but you know, it's, you're not obviously, you're not gonna apply like a, a sealant or, or a wax because that's not that level of service, but you're gonna do a, a, a spray wax or some form of spray protection as you're drying the vehicle, just because that's like an easy way to add a layer of protection and give it a bit of shine. So this one, super simple. We don't have a bunch of crazy like spray waxes here. Like we'll have one on hand, we'll keep that one filled and that's it. We're not trying seven different spray waxes every single time because the main goal of it is just like, is just to give it a little bit of shine and protection. That's it, we're not thinking like, oh, this is gonna prolong the durability for the next like six months. It's like, it's a very simple, like a quick little touch point of like, oh yeah, let's let's kind of up the uh, uh, up the, the shine and protection on this one service. So very simple, don't overcomplicate it. Number eight, this one helps out a lot and that's gonna be your drying aid. So on this one, we primarily buy it locally uh, from Aqua Gloss, but this one is super helpful when you're working on a vehicle that has no protection, that maybe has a lot of contaminants on the paintwork. And if you if you've ever tried to dry a vehicle that has contaminants, that isn't polished, that doesn't have protection, the water stays flat on the surface. And what this means is it just, the water doesn't run off, so it's gonna take longer to dry the vehicle because the water just on the paintwork. So you're gonna use a drying aid to give the paintwork some hydrophob hydrophobic properties. That way, once you, once you rinse it, the water is actually sheeting off and beating off. So on this one, what you would do is on your final rinse, you're gonna spray your drying aid across the vehicle and literally just rinse it off. And the vehicle will be much easier to clean and you will visibly be able to tell that not as much water is sticking to the paintwork because it has those hydrophobic properties and it's actually running down the vehicle. So this was actually very, very, very helpful. Number nine is gonna be a paint prep. And this one's the step right before you actually apply your protection, whether it's a wax, a sealant, or a coating. So this is to make sure you're removing any residual polish or waxes or anything that might interfere with the actual bonding of whatever protection that you're using. So a lot of times when you're doing a, co a coating, like you wanna make sure that the paint is absolutely, as we call it, naked. That way the coating is bonding properly to the actual clear coat, the paintwork. Uh, because if there is leftover residue or polish, well then now you're just kind of messing up all the adhesion and it might not work as well. And maybe, you know, the next time the vehicle comes to you, you're gonna see uh, a spot in the coating that isn't sheeting off or beating off as it is on the rest of the vehicle, just because that portion may have not been properly prepped for the coating. And again, this applies for any form of, of, of protection. It helps to make sure that the that the paintwork is naked. That way, the adhesion to of the sealant of the protection is going to bond properly to the paintwork. Number ten is going to be your wax or sealants. Now, this one very straightforward. It's been around for years. I won't spend too much time on it. But obviously, if you're going to add some form of 
of protection to the vehicle when it's a uh, when you're doing some kind of washing wax or wash and seal we need some some protection so for the most part we're always going with a sealants like I don't really think we use waxes that much at all anymore just because the sealants are just far more durable um, and I, you know like I don't not many people can there's not much of a difference between a wax and a sealant. Like some people say, like, oh, the wax is, is cooler, but the sealant is 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 is, uh, is warmer. It's like, actually, bro, actually, I've never seen that. You know, like it. I'm gonna if if you want to see gloss and the paintwork, it's like, okay, well, go go properly prep the vehicle. Go remove the swirls and scratches. Like once you do all that, like it's basically how it's gonna be. And then the wax, the sealant, whatever, is gonna give it that last little bit of of, of shine. Um, so like between a wax and a sealant, I can't really tell you the biggest difference. Um, but as far as dur durability goes, we primarily go with a sealant when we're applying a uh, when we're applying that form of protection. And that's gonna wrap up this video. Let me know what would you add to this list. I didn't want to go super crazy with it, but I think these are kind of highlights the main essentials that you need. If you want to check out the links to these products, you can click down below. Or if you want to check out Jobber Grants, you can also find that below. It takes literally less than five minutes to apply. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you on the next one.